right, so hopefully from watching that, you can see how important sound design and good sound effects are in bringing a video to life, really helping to tell your story and immerse your audience more into the visuals that you're showing them. Before I show you exactly how I went about sound designing this particular video, let's go over a few of the different types of sound effects that you can have. So number one would be your atmospheres or undertones. And basically what this is, is an underlying tone that will basically set the mood for your video. So you could have something that's kind of light and flowy and high pitched, or you could have something that's dark and moody and drony, depending what type of feel you wanna go for with your video. The second type of sound effects that we have are something called risers. And I use these a lot to build suspense up to a certain moment in a film. So this is something that's going to build over time to exaggerate either a cut in the scene or a moment in your film. So risers are really, really impactful for creating suspense and drama when we're trying to show off certain different shots. Number three is your classic transitional sound effect. So these are things like whooshes and hits and different things that are gonna help you transition from one scene to another. And lastly, we've got my favorite type of sound effect and probably the sound effect that I use the most and that's ambient textures. So ambient textures are essentially just the sound effects that correlate with whatever's happening on screen and just help give a little bit of depth to your footage. So for instance, this could be something like rain or footsteps on leaves, um, keys jingling and engine starting, all those atmospheric sort of textures and sound effects that match up with what the viewer is seeing. Those are ambient textures. When you stack these on top of each other, that's when your film really comes to life. So if you're new around here, my name is Gab. I make videos all about photography, filmmaking and tech. So if that's something that you're interested in, consider hitting the subscribe button below. And with that all said and done, let's jump into Premiere Pro and do some sound design. All right, so this here is the project timeline for the video that we watched. And at first glance, you might think this is a little bit scary and a little bit overwhelming. There's 16 different audio layers there and probably around 40 to 50 different sound effects used in this 30 second video. But I'm gonna break it down for you and tell you exactly what each sound does and the effect that it has on our video. So. The four different categories or types of sound effects that we spoke about, I like to label them and categorize them as different colors in my sound layers so I know exactly what's what and what it's being used for. So we've got our undertone labeled as blue, we've got our risers labeled as purple, our hits and transitions labeled as red, and all those ambient textures and other sound effects labeled as green. So let me single out the different layers. So if I single out this blue layer here, that's gonna be the undertone for our whole video. So if I hit play on that, you can hear it's just kind of like a nice neutral drone that kind of carries through from shot to shot. And we've got that stretched out over the entirety of our timeline um, because that is gonna be the undertone that really sets the mood and sets the bass for this edit. So that usually is my first layer that I have there. And that works really nicely, I think, to just sell the mood for this video. As well as that, we've got our risers. If I single these layers and I play this through, you can see the points where I've added those in and the impact that they have. So if I play it through here, we've got one that starts to build. And then it cuts off as we transition into that new landscape. We've got another one here. Again, it cuts off when we change into the different landscape and then a nice big build at the end that's going to cut off at the end of the whole video. Done. And keep in mind as well, you're not really gonna have the full effect of all these sound effects until you combine them and stack them all together because that's when they really come to life. So all these little red layers here are our transitional layers. Um, so these are gonna be our whooshes and our hits and they're gonna really just help us make an impact when we're cutting from scene to scene or make those cuts more seamless. If I play this through here, you can see that that comes in and it's almost as if the sound is pushing us into that new shot and that new landscape. So we've got a few other different transitional effects down here. So if I play this through, you can see the impact that that has.
Now these sounds are obviously really impactful and really good tools to help move from shot to shot and build suspense and different moods. But what's really gonna bring our footage to life is those ambient textures that I spoke about. So things like rain and wind and leaves. And so if I play those through, you can hear we've got a nice breeze. It gets heavier as we get lift into the drone shots and it, and it pulls through as well into the next shot. Here we've got some rain that kind of fades in and out. As you can see, like the water texture on the leaves then, then that fades out as we get into the sky because obviously it's not raining there. And if I play all of these layers together, you can see how impactful it is when you start stacking them on top of each other. So those impacts married with the undertone, married with the textures, they all kind of work together to bring this really immersive experience to life and sell the visuals that you've got on your screen. All right, so if we move down the timeline a little bit, we've got some more ambient textures. So we've got keys jingling, the car door closing, and then the car driving off. So let me single out these tracks here and you can hear all those different sounds. And then we've got another hit as we move into that next shot. So if I single that out, you can see how the hit transitions from this scene to the next scene. There you go. We've also used quite a lot of textures moving into this shot. So if I play that through, and then that plays all the way through here. And then with these hyperlapses, because we have got that shot of the train going through the tunnel, I've started that quite early on in the scene. So if I single that out, you can hear it kind of fades up and through along with our riser all the way up into the point where we change scene into the next landscape. So. And then obviously as we jump into the next landscape, you can hear the birds chirping, the bugs and that nice light breeze as we move into a completely new setting. One of the ones that I really like is this waterfall. So if I single that out and I expand it, you can see that we've faded that track in because we've started high with a drone shot coming over the waterfall and then we bring it back in so it's a little bit more impactful. So if I play that through, you can hear just the waterfall sounds and then it comes in. So you can see how it starts off quite faded and then it comes back in really strong there. And then obviously with our next shot starting underwater, this can obviously fade through into that next scene. So you can get quite creative with these sounds and that's something that I kind of experimented with here. You can look at your scene or look at your shot and think, well, what, what would I hear in this scenario? What sort of things would be happening might not necessarily be in the shot, but what would be happening in this environment? So I added a little boat bell ding, might not necessarily have been in this particular shot, but I think it just helps to add a bit of depth and add a bit of atmosphere to the images that you're showing. So if I play it through, you can hear that ding as it goes into the next shot. And I also decided to add a heartbeat to the end of our clip here, because it kind of is another way to build suspense and build anticipation leading up to the end or the climax of the video. So if I single that track out, you can see the heartbeat and how that kind of gradually comes in all the way up into the end. So that stacked with the riser, stacked with the undertone, stacked with all the atmosphere, you can see how impactful that is with these last scenes all stacked together. cuts off. None of these sounds were captured in camera. They were all sourced online and there's a bunch of really, really good resources that you can find online for sound effects. A lot of them are free. I use Epidemic Sound the most. You can basically just go in and search what you're looking for. They have a whole sound effects tab as well as a music tracks tab. Another really good platform that I use is Lens Distortions. They have a few different sound effects packs for sale. They are quite pricey, but they do have some really good risers. Um, and atmospheres in those packs there that are really impactful for filmmaking. If you are by any chance interested in testing out Epidemic Sound, I have included a one month free trial link down in the description. So feel free to check that out and test out some of their sound effects on your own films if you feel like that's something that you want to do. So this was just a very basic breakdown of how I go about sound designing my videos. 
um, the different types of tracks and sound effects I use and how they all work together simultaneously to create an overall immersive audio experience. Hopefully you learned something new today and you gained something from this. I'd love to hear if you tested out any of these techniques down in the comments and how you went with your own sound design. If you did learn something from this video, be sure to drop a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.